Good morning, everybody. It is a wonderful Sunday morning. We have made it into draft two, or day two, draft one. And uh, we had a nice little Demir deck that uh, was able to get there off of the back of the Palantir, which uh, that colorless mythic, which the Horn of Gondor should be a mythic as well. But anyway, um, here we go. This is my first time ever competing in the Arena Open, and I'm excited to see how it goes. A little nervous, a little nervous, as always. Just trying to, uh, you know, wake up enough to uh, <laughs> not make any uber punts. I basically have two strategies going into this. One is to force Rakdos, since it seems to be the best, the strongest of all of the archetypes. But the uh, I think that uh, I'm not going to be alone on that strategy. So I think we kind of just let the cards guide us, see what uncommons and rares, if they push us in any direction, and uh, see how long this takes too. I've also I've got I've got a wedding to get to, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we got Radagast. All right, Radagast. Oh, we've got Aomir of Ritamark. This is probably a better card to take, but Radagast is definitely one of the green, one of the reasons to be green. And hopefully green is a little bit more open than if we were to, to take red. So I'm I'm gonna go with Radagast over Rittermark. I think Rittermark's the better card. But I think green's more likely to be open. So it's really between those two for me. And let's just take let's take Radagast here. Let somebody else get Aomir of Rittermark. Ah, oh, and then our second pick here is an Aomir of Rittermark. We could pass two Aomirs of Rittermark. That would be absolutely insane, though. Otherwise, we're looking at Troll. person to our left is probably going to be in red because of that Ritter mark. And I don't really, there's nothing else in the pack that's like, I mean, and the, also this, right? Like this is also likely going to put somebody into red, but if the red cards are just super available, we should probably take it, but we're probably end up not playing this if I, if I had to guess. Okay, this is good. We've got an Int's Fury. Also a Quick Beam. Faramir, Quickbeam are kind of on the same level. Errand Rider of Gondor is pretty good. The uh, card draw is really nice. But I imagine this will be sort of like playing in pod drafting, where the um, picks are gonna for removal are going to be harder to find. So, because on Arena, I might try to actually wheel Ince Fury. Okay. This is good. This is good. This is okay. So... I think this is somewhat of a... <clears throat> like a filler card. 
in Demir. It's um, it's all right. It's decent. Same with the um, guy of the white hand, Ugluck. So somebody's having the black red dream. But I think I'm just going to keep carving out green here, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. Wow, we're, all, we're already down to pretty slim pickings. Stalwarts. Take chance my elves. Just continue to cut the green. There's no real person who's going to be fighting me for green, though. And Stalwarts of Osgiliath is pretty good in the Ring Temptation strategy. We could also take Morgul Knife Wound just to lean towards Golgari and have even more removal. Did pass the Aaron Rider of Gondor. Okay, yeah, so very different than in Arena Pods. There's just um, a lot of the good cards are already gone. So this is going to be very much like drafting in Peeps and Keeps. Knife. So right now I'm just trying to get some options to go with our green. Any, anything that would be good if if it looks like it's opened or if it matches with a busted card in pack two. I don't mind the knife wound. I think it's decent removal. All right, another ug luck, but we're not doing that. Black red. There's a war beast. If we, if we okay, so we do have Amir, and Amir is probably our best card. And I have. Uh, I do like War Beast in Gruul. There's also a Protector of Gondor. Ah, could have gone either way there. But. Using Rad Radagast to find our air mirrors is not a bad plan. Alright, we've got Snarling Warg and Orcish Medicine and Crusher. I'm going to lean towards Crusher, I think, and try to go for Gruel. The, the Crusher is really not that great in Gruel. There's a Merkwood Bats, huh? Okay, well, this is a pretty useful card in helping us get to our later game, it, regardless of which strategy we do. Take the spider. Double spider or bag and porter. Dang. Okay, I don't know. That, that, I think either one of those is fine. <clears throat> All right. I don't. I think we'll be running any of those. I guess in, in case we end up in Boros for some strange reason. Okay. Let's see what we've got in pack two. <laughs> Not a lot of green, okay. Not a lot of red. Kind of a weak pack for green-red. We 
We could splash Shadow Facts. We could take Eowyn and lean, lean towards green-white. Splash Shadow Facts. I don't really want to splash if I can help it. All right, I'm gonna take Eowyn and, and see. Maybe maybe we're green white. Gimli's Fury. Uh oh, another just terrible pack for green red, huh? And not great for white. There's some decent black cards. If we end up shifting over into Golgari. Definitely not sold on what direction we're going yet, and I think we can try to wield the spider. So I guess we'll take Torment here. I've enjoyed it if we do end up in Golgari. We, we need some early drops though, don't we? Like what our creatures right now are looking kind of on the top end. <laughs> Hopefully we see some better stuff. Mines of Moria hasn't been a very important rare land. Okay. Mary. Another Torment of Golem. I like Mary in black or er, in uh green red. And in and in green white. So that's a good pickup for us. Or everything but blue. Okay. <laughs> Flamesmith, another Crusher, Berserker. Well, as much as I would like to say that we're green-red, I'm not sure that we are. Amir might be worth playing, though. Like, it might be worth trying really, really hard to be green-red. We could take Berserker. Mushroom Watchdogs, I think, is okay, though. It's, like, not great, but it's a playable filler. We need two drops. That's... that's <clears throat> Safer pick, I think, than Berserker. Dauntless Breaking of the Fellowship for more interaction. Since our interaction, I like I said, is going to be pretty thin. Okay. Farsight, Limbus, Guide. Guide's okay. It's not as it's not really what we want to be doing. I mean, I think these are just I think we're focusing on Jund. Jund. Guide or Limbus, I think, can work here, but let's get some more creatures, eh? Radagast. Ooh, Ince Fury and a Generous Int. We do want Generous Int. So. Um, very mid black and then no red. Okay, so we'd kind of be forcing to make red happen. But, like I said, Amir is just that strong, right? Could be worth doing. Oh, we got a full full playset of Ince Fury. Okay, that's good for us. Q 
Okay, so I think we're going to do guide. Brusher is probably out. Looks, it's looking okay. We need, we need a little bit more early interaction. Haunt versus Gimli's Fury. We could have been Golgari too. Bilbo retired burglar? No one on the blue red train, huh? Guess it's kind of hard to, in pod, get that to work. Uh, we'll just take the two drop here. We don't have a three drop yet, but I do think <clears throat> that the chance elves are not super great. Probably don't play the Farsight. Birkenbrand. Dagon Porter. Alright, well, we have certainly enough four drops. Shortcut to mushrooms is no good. Got another breaking of the fellowship. I think we take Spearmaster here. Since we have enough fours. Probably try to wheel this. Breaking of the Fellowship is okay. Okay, we've got a mini partings. Brentless Rohirrim. I think we do want to be kind of four drop heavy over many partings. Many partings is fine. Fine filler. All right, we got a friendly rivalry. Shelob. Ooh, if we had taken the mini partings, we might have been able to actually splash Shelob there. Still, it's usually better to not splash. And we've got some Crabain. I definitely think, like, I think the Aomir is kind of messing with me. I think we would have been a stronger Golgari position. Still need a couple ones and two drops to be really sitting pretty. But we do have a lot of... Pop end. Okay, um, generous int versus quick beam, huh? Quick beam is pretty... Spicy. As long as we have enough creatures. If it's the only thing on the board, I think I'd rather have the Generous Int. But I'm going to take Quick Beam and call it good. Okay, Watchdogs. Frodo? Axe and Farsight. Okay. And with all of these um, watchdogs, I think actually the mini partings was a little bit of a, a, a miss. But we like Fire Leaper. Fire Leaper's good. 
Aram Lancer is not really what we're trying to do. But two drops, two drops, two drops, right? That's a really good pickup for us for the Fire Leaper. Friendly Rivalry. Stew the Conies. We've got plenty of interaction. This is good. This is good. So with this much interaction, we can trim a breaking of the fellowship. Deck's looking like it's okay. Not amazing, but okay. Rare draft in <laughs> arena open. Sure. I mean, I could continue to do it. I don't think we're going to play Breaking of the Fellowship. Bombadil's Song, doubt I'll play it, but maybe. I do like protecting my big beefy things like Radagast, right? We might want it over like Pippin's Bravery. Alright, Crusher, we have way too many 4-drops already, so that's not happening. Axe, huh? No, oh, we don't need the axe. Alright, well, it was definitely... <laughs> that was tricky. That was definitely tricky. All right, well, I, I was joking about how I was going to end up in green, and I do find myself once again in green. Um, we're a little bit top-heavy, right? We, we are eight, four drops, which is acceptable. I do... Th this probably was better as an int, but I do wish I had picked up the mini parting since we ended up with three Mushroom Watchdogs. Um, but this gives us six early to hit on our mulligans. We have a weak three, but then we have a pretty decent four. Help us go find the stuff that's going to help us win. Amir is probably our best card. Radagast and Amir, definitely. Pack one coming in strong. So we kind of just made pack one work. Which is okay. And then our weakest interaction. That's a good question. And this is where I like to look at, um, you might be like, what are, what are you typing, right? I, I'm looking up stats on 17 lands to kind of, like, give me a little bit of info, right? So, like, Ince Fury, absolutely amazing. Top quality, right? We're not we're not touching Ince Fury. Bombadil Song, on the other hand. Um, It's got a 53% in Gruel, which is its highest archetype. So it's it's best in Gruel. And it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, if you're going to have a whole bunch of four drops that you're wanting to protect, then Bombadil's Song comes up. So Whereas Gimli's Fury... Not really what we want to be doing in... Somewhere between a C minus and a D plus. So it's probably right to take out Gimli's Fury. We have enough in like staying power anyway, so that kind of makes you know it makes sense. I think it's justifiable to cut Fury over Bombadil's song. It's also red. And if the more that we can just be green, the better. And then bravery is a little bit of a cheap combat trick. And I've liked the one-cost combat tricks in the set. What do we call this one? D1, D2? D1, D1. Alright, I usually put my skins on to remind myself what, what color I am and whatnot, but... Um, 
In this one, we don't want to give any clues to our opponents about what's going on, what our strategy is. Running 15 creatures, 8 interaction. It's a little nerve wracking. <clears throat> to, it's a little bit, it's not perfect. But you know what? I did my best. All green. Nothing until turn four. Opponent goes first, but then maybe turn four we can kind of turn it back around and stabilize. I really don't like to mulligan. If I can avoid it. Having a turn four play, though... We could, we, if we don't draw any early interaction, we're kind of toast. And we do have seven cards to hit. We have Mary, the three mushroom watchdogs, the fire leaper, spider, and spearmaster. And mulligans in best of three can be really scary, so. Luck be a lady. <laughs> Top deck is like any of those cards I just mentioned. Hey, fellow green player. Okay. Green white. Okay. Not looking great. Okay. Looking good. I do not think Brandywine Farmer is very good. I can't believe we don't have a play though. And it was a risky keep, and we did not get what we needed. But maybe we can stabilize. And to our opponent, maybe it'll just look like we're stuck on green. A okay, fair mirror. Fine. Well, well, we will eventually find our red. Uh, just don't have removal for Radagast and everything is fine. Okay. Okay. Wow, they just went ham, hoping to find things off of the top of their library, huh? Well, I think I just go with Int's Fury here. Pathfinder... So this makes it so that creatures of control can add mana, so they're at six, which means they can start pumping with Pathfinder. It's pretty tempting to go double in Sphere. And if we're gonna do that, then we might as well bring them down to the top deck, right? Go here, wipe both, get some counters on Radagast. a choice. It's them for eight. I didn't have removal for him before. I do have red in the deck, right? <laughs> yeah, we have eight sources of mountains. All right. Now, taking out their mana dork there was a choice, because if we could hold up Bombadil's song to keep Radagast alive, that would be good. Because if they do have removal here, 
then kind of in trouble. Damn, okay. Uh, the nice thing about this, though, is that Radagast still has the ability. And we just need... Preferably one red would be great. We can hold up in Fury, though. We're, we're, we're doing okay considering we're having some prop like mana issues game one, for sure. That is a problem. Okay. They'd have to give me both, not quite. Do I have to kill Frodo before they start looting? We finally got red, but is it too late? They just slammed two legend bombs. We can't kill King of the Oathbreakers, but we can cause it to phase. Amir trades for King of the Oathbreakers and leaves me with a 1 1. Or they just take it and then. We can end up with Trample. I think I just go with here. Trade it for King. Or for Frodo. At least this game, we got Radagast and Amir. The games that we hit those two cards are going to be better for us, for sure. Ooh, and they took the damage! Alright. Should be pretty good for us. Since we can quick beam and attack with the 3-3 three, three and a 7-6 trample next turn, right? Plus 2, plus 2, and trample, yeah. Help us dig for more gas. Off of Radagast. Lots of good stuff. Now, if they have another Fog, or if they have a Hobbit Sting on Aemir, then we just need to start building the board still. Do, like, War Beast. We draw land, we can do Ince Fury and remove Baggins. We got options. Dang. Okay. Well, the good news here, though, is that as long as they don't have Bombadil's Song or something, we can use Int's Fury to kill Shire Sheriff, and since Amir has haste, it still works. Okay, perfect. Um... I'm just thinking, like, if they do have an instant that would make it plus three, plus three, which uh, they do have mana untapped, so they could have Gift of Strands, we would want to put Bombadil's Song on Radagast, I think. Um, but I could also play this, 
And this is going to give it plus two, plus two, so it's seven. So that's probably going to be good enough. Okay, I'm going to decide to not do Bombadils. Oh, the other, the, no, the, the other side to it is if they have Hobbit Sting. Ah, damn, and they have something. Mirkwood Spider is pretty nice for the Trample Death Touch. But I think we just go for bigger beef. Okay, moment of truth. Do you have Hobbit Sting? Damn it! Okay, I totally just punted. Damn it! I even called it. I didn't play around it. Okay, so I should have done Bombadil's song. I was trying to get the counters on Gogoroth, and that was probably really greedy. That was, yeah, if we end up losing, that's right where I lost there because we would have gotten Amir back, which is much more important than the plus one counter. I just didn't think that they had Hobbit Sting because they they didn't remove they didn't remove Amir. Like, if they had Hobbit Sting, they had four to remove Amir instead of using Shire Sheriff. So, I got pump faked. I got pump faked. Damn. Okay. Even if I had done it on Radagast there, we would be in a much better position. Because I need something with power to push through with Quick Beam. We're not dead yet, we still have time. What does this do? Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. I don't think they can target King without it phasing, right? Just trying to get bodies off the board here. And that gives them food to kill the farmer. I think I want to save Bombadil's song for the trample. <laughs> and not kill their farmer. Killing Frodo is pretty tempting because that gets rid of their looter. But I could also just trade it one for one for dogs. Fire Leaper is pretty spicy. What do I have? I have more Ince Furies. I need to find my Ince Fury. This is not going to help me find my Ince Fury because Radagast does help you find more creatures. <clears throat> All right. Ah, damn it. 
punts, you gotta walk away from that punt. You just gotta move on, move on. The good news is I can punch. Oh, damn it. We also have friendly rivalries, that's right. Samwise to get back watchdogs, okay. Keep it on Frodo, right? I have to block, and then you can snipe my 1 1. If you put it on Brandywine Farmer, I can just block it with a 1 1. Oh, they can snipe my guide, too, if they put it on Frodo. Am I dead? Oh, that doesn't phase it? Because the target of the spell, it phases out. When King of the Oathbreakers or another spirit you control phases in, create a 1-1 creature token with flying. Okay. We're dead next turn. Dang it. Okay, well, crap. If I hadn't, if I had played around the stupid hop sting. Mine to lose. Mine to lose. Alright, so we have nine. We have nine mana, so I can't play Quick Beam and Bag and Porter, and we're dead in the air. We did not draw our removal of either Friendly Rivalry or Ants Fury, which is too bad. We had three out of 18 cards. 19 cards. So it's just YOLO time, right? We play this. We can at least threaten to pump Fire Leaper once. Maybe I should have done it on Fire Leaper. Because then it would be a 3 1 trample. I don't think I'm pushing enough damage. Okay. So I think I'm doing 6 damage and I leave them at 1.
and Fire Leaper can't go face. Dang it, if I put it on Fire Leaper, no. King of the Oathbreakers phases back in on their turn, that would just be problematic. Do I show them Bombadil's song? Didn't quite get there. I think I'm going to hide Bombadil's song. I'm just making sure I'm not punting here, right? One, two, three, four, five. Four damage. Yeah, okay. One damage shy. Quick beam, why don't you have reach? Mind to lose, mind to lose. We were close. That was a close game. I, I'm feeling, I'm feel relatively confident that we can still win this in game two and game three, because we did get kind of stuck on mana. Didn't have anything until turn four. Um, sideboarding though, Gimli's Fury on the on Quick Beam is something I didn't really think about. If we had had Gimli's Fury in hand instead, though, none of my stuff were legendary that were actually attacking, right? Yeah. So, but we did have unblocked damage, but um, it's definitely like Bombadil's Song versus Gimli's Fury is definitely a question mark. We put in more interaction, but I think we have plenty of fight spells, we just didn't draw them. Let's run it again. <laughs> if I make it to day two and fizzle out on the first match because I punted on the Hobbit Sting, you know that's going to keep me up at night. <laughs> That's okay. I called it too. Like magic, man. Fun stuff. Okay, we've got a single red. Double red, better. Okay, we're gonna have to be lucky here. Having some mana issues. Best of three, doesn't have the hand smoother, and it shows. <laughs> Alright, well, as long as we draw land, everything's fine. Perfect. And it's double pip green. You're dead. You're dead, son. What's this? Okay. Equip cost of two. Equip creature has first strike as long as it's blocked or blocking or blocked by a goblin or orc. At the beginning of each combat, untap equip creature gets plus one plus one in haste. So they can set up some hasty plays here. Can I still remove it? I can remove it with Pippin's Bravery and Int's Fury. If they equip here, it goes to four. And I'm okay with trading the Mushroom Watchdogs, I think. Since I'd rather just slam Radagast. We could also just do the Pippin's Bravery and then Int's Fury to keep their board clear. If this gave it plus one plus one in first strike, I would be more scared, right? That's a good trade for us. I like that a lot. Ooh, 
death touch. At least we can two for one ourselves in a real bad situation. Butterbree, okay. Dump hand, go. Play spider first, see if we get anything useful. Nah, let's just dump, let's just go for the maximum pressure. Yeah, there's an argument to actually putting it on Spearmaster since Radagast has a big target on its head. I'm not playing super well. Why don't I get to choose this? X stops it where X is that creature's mana value. You may reveal a creature card that doesn't share a creature type with it. Human Knight. What? It doesn't. Sh this is a spider. Why wasn't I able to pick that one up? Top X cards of your library where X is that creature's mana value. You may reveal a creature card that doesn't share a creature type with a creature you control. Oh, with your creature you control. Spearmaster ruined my Amir off the top. Disgusting. Okay. Because Amir right here would be Chef's Kiss. <clears throat> wow, okay. We are at top decking. Ha <laughs> ha! What a beautiful top deck. You know, it would be really nice if that sting didn't trigger when there were no creatures in play. That would be cool. Combat trick. Ring temptation. Might be enough to get through the last thing that they have. I'll keep it. It's also lethal if they... Oh, no, they have food. Okay. Farsight to help them find the creature. Let's go. They got 18 left on their clock. I got 15. Clocks are okay. I'm definitely playing a little slow this morning. What did they get? Farmir? Alright, this Farmir's fine. Wow, no respect for the Pippin's bravery, huh? They're just like, nah. Well, they have to play something with two or less power now. Oh god, they went for the equip instead of the food? Okay, now they're doing the food as well. And they're attacking? Wait, what? Oh, because it untaps. All right. I want to take this to game three. Come on, buddy. Don't don't hang in there. All right. 
They got a what? <laughs> all right, all right. No kidding. I mean, they don't have any cards though, so Ince Fury should be lethal. They could have equipped though. Why didn't they equip? I don't know why they didn't equip. Oh, because then I couldn't block. Oh, because I couldn't block because of the ring. I got you. I got there. I got there. Took me a little bit, but I got there. Okay. Game three. Game three. Game three. All right, here we go. This is going to be a tough one. We're going to be on the draw. I swear I have mountains in the deck. All right, so we have a turn one play. And then nothing until turn four. Definitely a sketchy keep, but... Yeah, I got, we got to try. We got to hope that our opponent here has some problems. Okay, mole to six. We mole into five. Yeah. Dang it. What is this? Too bad this isn't indestructible. Please send mountains. This is gonna. This is. Ugh. It's okay. We get a mountain on turn four, then we draw Amor for turn five. Then we draw one more land for Quick Beam on six. And we're sitting pretty. Do I trade Mirkwood Spider for Shire Sheriff? With no other play in hand, probably not. I guess they could blink it. They're not putting a lot of pressure on me. They're not going to attack, okay. Oh my goodness, there's hope. There is hope. Okay. I think these are going to be useful later in the game, so we're just chilling. They are getting to a massive number though, so it's very possible that Relentless or Hiram will just get completely killed. <laughs> I 
Is rivalry a fight or a bite? Okay, friendly rivalry is a bite, not a fight, so having Mirkwood Spider I think is good. We're not against red, so we're not going to have a breaking of the fellowship moment. The only thing I'm thinking about here is whether or not we want to protect this from Hobbit Sting while removing pieces from their board. Oh, Samwise. <laughs> Damn, okay, definitely shouldn't have blocked. I forgot about Samwise. I'm just not playing my, I'm not playing my A game. So now they're going to sacrifice. I mean, we still play this, right? They're going to play, and we're, we're going to need to draw something, but we can draw something in then in Sphere. It's okay. So if I had just let that go through, they wouldn't have been able to bring in Samwise. The nice thing about them exiling Relentless Rohirrim here is that if we do get to trigger it, we do get the second level ring, which helps us loot. But we are definitely behind on the board. The perfect draw! <laughs> Let's go! And now one land, and we go quick beam. Put on the pressure. It's looking okay. They don't get a loot out of this, it's just to hit me for one damage. They're stuck on lands. There's hope. There's hope. Despite my misplays. So I get plus two, and I can still attack into Samwise. And I get a loot. Nice, Mountain is good. They do have the fog. It would be probably better to keep Bombadil. Let's see. I think actually I'd rather just develop the board than rather than play Bombadil. Since even if they play removal next turn, we'll have two things that we can pump with quickly. My, how the turns have tabled. <laughs> so we're going to have a 7-6 Trampler and a 4-4 Trampler? Damn it, okay. So, Bombadil's Song... What? Faramir? Faramir is not going to be enough.
We have 11. They can only block four of the trample. We have 11 trample damage, so they're just dead. All right, despite my punts in game one, we got there. Should have been a 2-0, I think, but I'll take it. All right, the queue times are super fast. Hey, we've got a three drop and two removal. They have a land cycler. They got the Urza's lands too, huh? Here's the land cycler. Didn't look like it paused after that, so I don't think there's a second one. Green blue. Interesting. Okay, so we could definitely there's there's a possibility of them flashing in. All right, if I play this first and they flash in the 3-2, we can do friendly rivalry. I don't need to have both, so I can still do friendly rivalry and play this. I don't need to play this first. If they don't play anything, then I'd rather play guide than the two dogs. Because I think what we're going to see here is the 3-2 flash. Okay. Counterspell is another reason to play watchdog, watchdog instead of guide. But if they have a counter spell for it, then it's not the end of the world. Okay. Do we need the fifth land? Or are we okay on four? I think we're okay on four since we have a double pip on both green and red. And I'm fine just chaining into more guides, but we're probably going to do some tricks next turn. Okay, so there's the 3-2. They didn't want to trade for Spearmaster. Okay. Nice. We only have two things of removal, so we really want to be careful about what we remove. But we're up against the green-blue scry deck. So far, nothing that, like, absolutely needs to be removed. If I remove the guide, I can start attacking... Target creature you control and up to one other target legendary creature you control. We don't have any legendaries. So this is just a bite spell for three. So I would have to do Int's Fury on guide. You think they multiple block? I can get the counter off of it if I wait. I also don't need to remove any of those things. They're not repeatable scries. Quick Beam isn't doing much in our hand. Eventually get there. Maybe I should have drawn that land. 
We got land now. And we quick beam doesn't. I mean, these are the next two turns. All right. Quick beam is really good pressure, though. Eventually, as long as it doesn't get counterspelled. Okay, so now we have a target to kill. If I go with Ince Fury... Pump, start pumping the gas on them, go with the double removal spell here. Then when next turn we're going to draw Quick Beam and play two Mushroom Watchdogs. Make them have something? We know they're going to have something because they've been scrying, right? Oh, this doesn't actually scry unless they Ring Tempt. Interesting. Yeah. All right, we cleared the board. Whether or not we should have held that other one back is a question mark. They've had plenty of scry, but ah, <laughs> dang. Okay. choices if we hadn't killed the three or if we hadn't attacked into the three two and just left the other guy back we would have had two three fours which really doesn't make this situation much better if they attack with a five six we can multiple block it so Dang it, really wanted to hit a land there. Since the longer we wait, the more powerful Arwen becomes. She can trigger a scry as well. If I attack with a 5-6, it's still good for the time being. The 4-4, four, four, not as much. 4-4 four, four just gets eaten by the 4-5. Dang it. Okay. Can I target you twice? <laughs> we can still send that one at least. Um, let's see. A 5-6 just trades one for one. But it trades up. Damn, and they had the removal for a 5-6. Okay, this is, uh, this looks like it's going to them. We're not dead yet, but... You gonna trade me for... I'm gonna snap block that. They can make it into a 3-5. Because they can trigger Arwen. Oh, 
Oh, this is the best thing to draw in a top deck battle. Now we just need to draw one of our fight spells. Before we're scryed into oblivion by Arwen. <laughs> Alright, well, I wish I had kept one removal for Arwen, I think. Because, like... At least this is preventing their attacks for the time being. But they are scrying... For sure. Alright, 6-6 six, six so that they can make into a 7-7. Seven, seven. Trades for two here. I want to keep my Death Toucher, I think. I can make it a 7-7. Seven, seven. Dealing 7. They have a combat trick in hand. We could get blown out here pretty easily. But they have to tap everything except for one mana. No, 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 two mana to do the scry trick. All right, they just take the two for two, or two for one. It's fair. Legolas. Okay, well, who's gonna who's gonna draw their f bite spells first, right? <laughs> We have to kill Arwen, right? Like a loss is kind of scary. Top deck battle. Ooh, that's a good top deck for them. They definitely have a good green blue deck. Damn, we needed a creature there to trigger Radagast so bad. I should bluff here. Let's see. Could be attacking with the spider, maybe? That was a good draw for them. <laughs> Alright, I think we're going to game two. At least we get the trigger next turn. Radagast and then Mushroom. Scry. Okay, so they have... They have an adequate amount of scry, Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six. Still go for the double, right? Ooh, Fire Leaper is interesting. How much would we pump Fire Leaper for? Enough to trade with Hjorn? Hmm. 
Derp can't multiple block there. How much are we taking? Okay, we take nine, we go to five. Can't pump. Say, I can. If I draw land, I can pump Fire Leaper four times, which is not enough to kill Hjorn. We might have to block with Radagast in a second here. Question is whether or not we want to do Fire Leaper to kill Watcher. And with the unblockable damage and everything, I think we do. I don't like that. Hopefully, I'm hoping here on this line that Radagast is enough to bring us into victory. I have a Bombadil? <laughs> oh. Alright, alright. GG. We weren't able to disrupt their scry stuff, man. Jeez. Seven. Dead yet. We're not dead yet. All right, we're going to give him some more information about her deck. Dang it. That's the downside with Radagast is it does put all of our fight spells on the bottom. But we're six away from Insphere. Let's see, are we just dead? Take two damage there. If they, Oh yeah, they scry here. That makes this unblockable. We go to two. We're not quite dead, right? So four damage puts us to two. We multiple block there, and then single block Radagast on the one one, and we go to one HP, and they're dead on the crackback. So not we're not dead yet. We're just really close to dead. Yeah, I guess they don't need to attack with Yorn. All they've got to do is hit a, a fight spell, and we're really out of this. Okay, that's not a fight spell. 6-8. Go to 4. Which in the current situation is lethal. Even with the food off of Brandy Buck. So. There's no creature that I have that can fight or remove. So I'll just play Amir. Might as well play Watchdogs. Probably should have tried to hit a spider there. Um, GG? We're just dead. I don't even get, I don't even get the 1-1 one -one off of Aramir. Sag. Close. It was close. Good game.
Ooh, buddy, we got an uphill battle. We lost game one. Die, Legolas, die. <laughs> Damn, and they even had the way to save the Watcher. If they hadn't had a way to save the Watcher, we would have been in that game, too. So they kind of just had the perfects. Um, Breaking of the Fellowship has worked well against Elves, since they have they tend to have targets that kill each other pretty well. So I think we should get Breaking of the Fellowship in. And removal's kind of light in Elves, so I think we can take out Bombadil's song for it. It seems like a pretty good trade. And then we just try to disrupt their scry, repeatable scry effects like Eowyn. Let's give it a shot. That was on, we were on the play on that one too. Damn. Slow hand. But we know elves take a little while to get going. Okay, nothing until turn... Th okay, maybe we draw a 3-drop. Draw a 3-drop. Draw a 3-drop. Okay, a 2-drop is acceptable. Doesn't block the repeatable scry, though. So if they do chance met elves here, they get a 4-3 that becomes a 5-4 and quickly becomes a problem. That's a little bit of a problem. I think if I just destroy their early interaction... What, and then they beat me by playing Arwen? I double clear the board and then go late? Or I play Radigat... So, let's see here. I'm gonna go with double clearing the board. Doesn't matter which order I do this in, right? All right, we got rid of their early stuff. I can even play War Beast first instead of Radagast. Rather get the dig off of it though. Oh good, they didn't have a counter spell. I was like, Ugh! okay, there goes our fight spells to the bottom of our library, exactly as planned. Let's see where they had bow. It just passed, huh? They have the flash creature. They have bow. I don't think they're sp uh, supposed to attack there. Okay. Chance my elves trades with war beast. No death touch triggers or, or no death touch tricks or anything. So if they give it plus three plus three, it becomes a six. So. 
could probably not throw Mushroom Watchdogs into the mix, but I'll just gang block it. <laughs> oh wait, is there a Death Touch trick? Oh! Radagast rip, okay. Trade watchdogs here. Yeah, they don't block the watchdogs. Very good. Interesting they didn't kill Amir. Why wouldn't they kill Amir there? That's a pretty damn sexy one for them to get. I mean, if we had gotten Quick Beam right there, that would have been insane. So we can deal 5 damage to them, but then they've stabilized. So it's Rohirrim. Oh, Rohirrim is almost amazing. At least allows us to get in with um, the army or the watchdogs. Ooh, or Fire Leaper. Fire Leaper can be a pretty spicy ring bearer. So that's a, it takes longer to set up. I think we go with Relentless for Harem and Spider and just get in for two. But Fire Leaper is, a, is an interesting line. It's tokens with Horses of Brune. I'd rather, I think, put it on the Watchdogs. Okay, they're essentially at 11 HP. Our board is looking pretty spicy. Shortcut to mushrooms. What does this do when it, something when sacrifice is food? Put a plus one plus one counter on it. Okay. Well, that sucks a little bit because now quick beam on Aemir is not as spicy. But they can only block my biggest creature. So unless they have the counter spell, they block Aemir. And we get in for one, five, nine. 10 damage without the pump. Wait. Math. 7, 8, yeah, 10. So this should be lethal. Yeah. They're done. Game 3, let's go! Woo! -wee. Yeah, disrupt their early plays, scry decks fall apart. They're kind of like, they build up in tempo. So I think the breaking of the Fellowship is a good inclusion. Anything else? No, I think we're good to run this back. Game three, here we go. We have to draw into, into playables. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I should have just kept the five lander. Do I keep the one lander here? And pray for it. We are on the draw. We have a two to hit the draw, and then we've got two drops. We'd have to hit the green, though. All right, I'm going to mold five. Sometimes you're just not lucky. Yeah, it's better. We have a two drop. We have Aemir in hand. Spearmaster. Probably just put back the dogs. 
Oh dang, what do we what do we put back? We ha do we have to put air do we have to put Aramir back? Aramir is just such a beating. We don't have any early interaction. All right, this is sketch. This is pretty good for against the elves. Ed. Goes nice with Spearmaster. I think I will put back Amir and Mushroom. We could go for the ultimate greed play, which is keep Amir, put back a forest. <sighs> Damn it. And they didn't mull. Well, hopefully they have a crappy hand over there. Alright, alright. Ince Fury, that's Dece. Okay. Mushroom Watchdogs would have been able to fight Arwen and not die. What? What trick do they have here? They're just accepting this as a, two, a one for one? They can't be. Whenever you scry, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Yeah. How quickly will that get out of hand? Oh man, and the play versus the draw here too. If we were able to pump it once, we could get it to be a 3-3 three, three and trade for both. Okay, so it's going to be four next turn. It's quickly getting out of reach. <sighs> Arwen. Okay, so we know that's going to go to four. Or even higher. They could have bow. Bow untaps, right? I, I'm guessing this is bow. And bow. What does bow do again? Flash. Attach it to turret creature control, untap it. Equip creature gets plus one, plus two. So we have a four, five. They just hold up bow, and there's no nothing I can do with Ince Fury, right? Well, we can kill it with even with bow, but only if I don't block and I have Spearmaster. Oh, it's not great. Okay, so assuming they have bow. Bow's really causing a problem here. Plus one, plus two. Does Bow scry? No. Okay, so I attack with Fire Leaper. If they play the bow and they block it, I can pump it once to kill Arwen. If they don't do anything like that, then I need to get it to... 5, and I can't do that. Okay, I've got... Ooh, less than 9 minutes. I gotta pay attention. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. All 
All right, so even if they flash in the bow... Oh, damn it, I missed out on damage. Okay, even if they flash in the bow, Fire Leaper dies and then can kill R1. So I missed out on the damage. It's fine. <sighs> okay, magic's hard and I've got nine minutes left. <laughs> if I lose the time, oh no! <laughs> Yeah, this is not looking good, though. We've only got forests. We're at 7 HP. I think I'm in trouble. No! <laughs> the elves are too strong. I couldn't beat Arwen. Mana problems, mold of five. It's a good, it's a good elf deck, though. We're not dead yet. We're just mostly dead. Have to block, otherwise we're dead. They have three lethal threats, and I have quick beam. All right, GGS. Couldn't quite hack it. Stupid, sexy Arwen. Bro, you just attack here and you're good. I can always pray that there's a power outage wherever they are and they disconnect. It would be a cheap win, but you know, for 2,000 bucks, I'd take it, right? All right, well, I think it's single Elim, so I think I'm done. I think that's it. All red. Can't do it. Okay. Better. Nothing until turn four. Let's hope that they're not actually mono red. Damn it. Okay. Not a hand you want to see against mono red. Good card for us. I think I want to keep Fire Leaper alive a little bit longer. We don't need to disrupt their plays yet. Muster, okay. Radagast? Spider on bottom. I guess if we play Radagast, we know we can hit Spider, play Spider. And then we've got double interaction. Alright. Down. I'm down, dog. Alright, so we've got Shelob's Ambush as a possibility here. If they keep attacking. They went into Crabane. We still have a pretty good block. Rentless Rohirrim. Okay, Grand. Grand is a little bit of an issue, but only if they have an army. They can crew. Okay, we're going to have to do some stuff next turn to deal with Grand, but this feels like a easy Radagast first. Since they can crew the 5-5, we don't have a good attack with Guide. I do think I like the Spider. It works really well with Friendly Rivalry. Okay. 
We're chilling. Black red. Black red's scary business. We've got a death toucher against Grand. That's nice. So they played Aomir here. That would be pretty bad. Yeah, War Beast ain't good either. Now they have to debate about whether or not to trade Grand for Spider. It looks like they will. Okay. I mean, it makes sense they get a bigger army out of it. Alright, next, so that gives them 3 3 army. Kill the 3-3 three, three army with Guide, and then fight Warbeast. It's okay. Because then they just have two, two twos, which don't line up well against our board. I could have, if I'd made, let's see, five, yeah, that's not good. And then they're completely tapped out, and we have decent blocks anyway. So, I don't know if they can make the army bigger. I think I attack with Radagast here for two. Okay. Let's see if that was enough to slow them down. They still have five cards over there. Damn. Trade for the army, kill Kribane, try to win off of Rad Radagast. If they have Shelob's ambush. I could be in trouble. I suppose we can still trade it for the army. Improvised club. Okay. It's a little sketch. Hopefully we can just chain good stuff here. Please hit. It's a hit. Not blocking with Radagast. And then we have to debate about whether or not we're trying to race the 5-5, which with food is interesting. This sacrifice ability is only as a sorcery. So if we attack here, this pump, yeah. Tricky, tricky, okay. Yeah, black red is spicy, man. I think we take it this turn. Pray for a good top deck. Like quick beam. Land is not that. Do I trade Brandybuck? 
So we keep this back to block the 4-4. Four, four. We do this to trade for 3 life. Or we go for multiple blocking and letting Radagast go. Hitting the land there was really unfortunate. Oh, I should have played the land. I hope if we draw another land, though, it's basically over. Oh dear! They have the axe! Okay, what does axe do again? Legendary Menace, plus three. They're going to get Menace on this, though. But my only hope is to hit a double spell off of Radagast, right? <laughs> oh gosh, and Shelob's ambush? Do you have it? Ever do you have it all? <laughs> GG. <laughs> Uh, the perfects. Oh man, and friendly rivalry doesn't do anything. All right. Spicy black red deck. Ah, okay. Well, I was hoping not to bump into one of these. Bump Dill's song still looks decent. Over Relentless Rohirrim. Hopefully we can just draw a little bit better. Not have to mull. Ah. Uh. Alright, we have a turn three, we have two interactions, and then we have a five and a six. Slow. It's definitely slow. Please send land. Please send land. Whew. All right. Awkward. It's three plus zero. If they go for the equip, we can use this as an instant. Ince Fury here on Vanguard feels bad. They're likely to build an army anyway. I think we're just gonna chill until we hit later. Hopefully, they get if they go for the equip with the axe, then we can use friendly rivalry. I doubt they do that though. Okay, bats is a better target. We could go for wiping their board. They do Ince Fury on Vanguard, or sorry, Friendly Rivalry on Vanguard, and then Ince Fury on Bats, and Ince Fury on the army. I would have nothing left in hand. So whether or not the Vanguard's worth doing anything about. All right, well, they could start racing us pretty hard in the air with that Merkwood Bats. I could Ince Fury here and get rid of the Bats and then chill, but I think we just play Radagast. Baggin, Porter, Guide, or Brandybuck. Brandybuck gives us some nice 
food cheaper with our current mana situation since we already have a five drop and or yeah a five drop and a four drop or, sorry five drop and a six drop i think i will go with actually playing mary Come on, equip the axe on your bats. Do it. She lobs ambush. If I did block. Hey, okay, ugh luck. Wiping the board is looking more and more tempting here. Now, if they do have Shelob's Ambush, fight spells are very dangerous. Alright, so we go Ince Fury. Fight Ugluck. If they use Shelob's Ambush, then we're going to have a friendly rivalry Ugluck. And that's just the way it is. Well, they didn't have Shelob's Ambush. Okay. It's interesting. Do I need to kill the bats? I'm gonna go with no. Let's go hear him. Okay, we knew that was going to happen eventually. Lots of removal here. Okay, Ince Fury friendly rivalry on the bats. I mean, the 5-1 is nothing to scoff at, that's for sure. We're almost through their stuff, though. I think it's okay to trade Mary here for the food. We get an army. Hopefully the army doesn't get out of hand. Uh, they were thinking about it because the axe does give them five, right? So right here, this is four. They haven't had Shelob's Ambush. We know they do have one. Also know they have an improvised club. Two cards left. They didn't attack. Okay. I'm guessing Quick Beam here is enough to seal the deal.
Okay. No, she loves ambush. That's good. They flooded. Lucky for us, they flooded. All right. Well, kind of want to set up the possible lethal here, right? Go with Ins Fury on Radagast. Slam Warbeast. Do I need to do Warbeast first? I don't think there's any disadvantage to playing Warbeast first. Doesn't look like they have anything anyway. Hey! Going to game three. We can do this. We can do this. We just need them to hiccup like they did again. That was great. Okay, we have a two drop. We have interaction. It's not great, but it's it's not a it's not a mulligan. Uh, Vanguard on turn two again. Oh, Maher. Does Maher need to die? I think there's a chance that Mahir needs to die. They've got the army going, which is scary business for sure. I could save... I could do the fight spell now. Since the bite spell next turn, if we draw land, allows me to hit for four. Probably do that. I could also play it more aggressively and try to race Mahor and remove their army since I get the food. But I think trying to race Rakdos is a bad choice. But I'm trying to what I'm hoping here is what I'm hoping to do here is outlast Rakdos. And if they grow their army with Crabane, we can kill the army and leave them with a 1-1 one, one if I draw a land. That's a lot. Dang it, we didn't hit the land. Why? Are we on damage control here? Do a friendly rivalry on their 2 2. Bombadil's song? It's too much gas. We really needed to land there. <sighs> Alright. If I let them untap and they just attack, we're looking at taking four. Probably build board. Yeah, I think I need to set up at least the double thing next turn, and I think since this is essentially gaining me three life, I attack there. We sacrifice the food, keep the three life. I think I'm going to keep the three life. Even though a 3-3 would be pretty good here. If they do removal on watchdogs and hit me for 5... Okay, so I could have traded... Maybe it was right to pop the food there. 
But again, I mean, I'm just so nervous against Rakdos and the axe. Okay. Oh, give me a free... <laughs> okay, well, now we can't attack. Now we hold up friendly rivalry for whatever they equip the axe to. Not like this, Magic. Not like this. I wanted a good game three. Quick creature gets plus three plus zero. I think I just take the damage so that I can continue to remove stuff with friendly rivalry. <sighs> Please land, 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 land. So that we can at least hold up Bombadil's song. Okay. We are pretty dead. They have two cards in hand. If they're both lands, there's a chance, but this ain't looking good. Neat. It's going to grow ug luck too. I just don't know what to do here. Hey, welcome to the party, bro. We have the chump block now against their 5-5 five, five, and go to 3. Neat. All right, well, we finally got to four lands, but a little bit too late. Oh, yeah, they get menace. Good game. Damn. I'm just, I'm, I'm having some land issues this morning. All right, we got turn two, turn four, turn five with an interaction. Finally didn't get the play. Fire Leaper versus Watchdogs. Removes a 3-3. Three, three. They play something with two power, this fights better than this. This removes something with four toughness. Well, once again, Mushroom Watchdogs would have been the right thing here with Int's Fury. I suppose there's a chance that they trade here. No. 
maybe I was supposed to ins Fury there. But it ain't looking good. Okay, so if I pump Fire Leaper and Ince Fury into Rohirrim, I clear their board. Two for two. They're at the third level ring, though. So hopefully Aomir can carry us here. Call of the Ring! Okay, they haven't had a counterspell yet. YOLO. Nice. Bounce, Soothing a Smeagol. Isolation, okay. We're going to fire at will with Aemir. It's going to be good. All right. Counterspell? Nope. Another isolation? Knots. Okay. Man. I, it depends on the deck, but I might have tapped Warbeast to try to hit the counterspell for Aemir. Blue red spells? Splash black for Call of the Ring? Is Compost Pile Dirt Nymph? No. Alright, Mouth of Sauron gets a pretty big dude here. 4-4. Four, four. Wall. All right. Definitely want Bombadil's song against a reactive deck. Our fight spells look maybe a little bit weak, but. I mean, there was Bilbo, Relentless, Oliphant. Like, we got some things that we want to try to remove. Probably just run this back. Could put in Gimli's Fury. Rel uh, yeah, that one's a choice. Relentless, um, Gimli's Fury versus Bombadil's Song. All right. We got a two drop. We learned our lesson several games now. This is a better two drop. They play Bilbo. It Mushroom Watchdogs fights better. Nice. I mean, they get in the ring up there fast, you know? So this is either Fire Leaper into Ince Fury. Ooh. Some spice coming at us, for sure. Fire Leaper would be a two-for-one on their one creature. Prevent the loot. I think I'm going to go with playing Bag End.
We're stuck on one green, so we can't do Ince Fury and Friendly Rivalry. We've got Knots, Isolation. If they don't play anything here, I can kind of assume that it's Isolation. And... I think I'm fine trading this. They have a combat trick. If they do have a combat trick. I may have to ince Fury and trade my watchdogs for it. Do we see any deceive the messengers? Okay. If I just keep taking out their threats, I feel like we're going to be okay. Two for wanting. I could attack with the Watchdogs, but I'll just go here, play Fire Leaper. <laughs> Having four. We needed a Legolas in this deck. Legolas would have been insanity. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good for them. Okay, like I said, we just keep removing their threats. So, Ince Fury here... ...gives me... Yeah, we just pump once here... ...and then play Ince Fury. Okay, that, so that is a 1-1, one, one, but the, we can block the 1-1. One, one. We're almost through. We're almost through the thick of it, guys. Can we go 50-50? Can we go Friendly Rivalry kills Oliphant. Oh yes, don't attack. Perfect. Racing and they're hitting for seven and we're hitting for five, so maybe I shouldn't be racing. But whenever I see the call of the ring, I'm just like, we gotta get this game over quick. We gotta go quick, man. I'm hoping that they're gonna try to do like the isolation since they have a three turn clock and. Like, we're, we're, we're on the same clock. Damn it. Okay. That's a problem. Mouth of Sauron. Grixis, Mouth of Sauron. It's pretty good. Ooh, and they have Sanction. 
That's probably game right there. Yep. Not looking good. I can't block Relentless or Hiram. They just take the damage here and I'm dead, right? Still not looking good. We take 10 damage. Go to three. We had so many fight spells this game too. We still weren't able to get there. All right, we got one shot to deal 10 damage. Aomir, Aomir off the top. And then they have to have nothing. They have to have lands over there. <laughs> uh, isolation, you're far foes. Okay, that's game. Now that gives me a blocker. All right. Game three. I thought Gruul had legs, man. I thought this could do it with Amir and Radagast. It's definitely got some issues. All right, here we go. One, one game to fun. Let's go. Okay, okay. One drop. Combat trick. At least Mirkwood Spider also works well at removing Bilbo. Please send lands. Please? Please. Aha. Okay. Just keep that up. Just keep that up. One more. One more. In fact, actually, two more would be perfectly fine with me. Bilbo. Apparently, they have Bilbo on turn three every game. Let's go. Nope. Okay. Inherited envelope. Nice. God, I wish we had had just a little bit more pressure. Okay, good, good, good. This is fine. This is fine. Now we scry to hit a land. For Aomir. Four piece. Fine. Good. Just don't play Nazgul. Play Bilbo. I'd be okay with Bilbo here. Ah, dang it. Aomir trades with Nazgul. And then we've got pretty good stuff. It's let's see, otherwise we could take the turn off to do the fight spell on it. They have a counter spell, this sucks. fine.
breaking of the fellowship. Man, I've got trauma from <laughs> a game earlier where they wiped my board with having spider on the field. We basically kill anything they play. Ooh, okay, that's pretty good for them. Do they just chill then? No, they're going for it. I like that. Do we need to kill Nazgul? I think we just keep developing the board. It is their loot. It does help them find their stuff. And now if they play Oliphant, we're still okay if they play Oliphant. Int's Fury is not good against Nazgul. Okay, there's Bilbo. Fourth level Ring Temptation makes the Nazgul even bigger. Hmm. Fire foes, okay. We want Bombadil's song up a hundred percent. Oh, for fear of fire foes. Jump block tonight. Come on, tap out. Fear fire foes, tap out. Dang, okay. Ince Fury on Warbeast of Gogoroth, though, is pretty good. Do I trade War Beast? Or just. I think I keep War Beast here. There it is, baby. I was really hoping we were going to get to slam quick beam for the win here. All right, well, we went 2-2. 50 2 50-50. We got some free gems out of it. It was a super fun experience. Definitely going to be playing in Arena Opens in the future. Hopefully one day we can get that sweet, sweet money and make it to draft two, but not tonight, not today. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Remember to hit like and subscribe. I have a weekly podcast as well as a weekly uh, community draft on Twitch, so be sure to check it out and uh, have a uh, have a good one, everybody. <laughs> Catch you later.